You ready, Pam? Mm-hmm. Good evening. Good evening. Please take the time to mute yourself if you haven't already. My name is Cynthia Smith and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating during eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other fun countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joe Turner. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improper and properly substituted by Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limit, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edge of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing man cannot perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having a shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Joshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given to salvation, and we must know that name. 
So the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the airplane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at the school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity and Yahshua and Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating in a mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered to the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah, and tend to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new right state. I watch where this peace no slogan is speak the truth. Let's see, is Teresa on? No, I don't see her. You can, you can just pick anybody you want. And this time we'll have a prayer by Lidora Nicholas. Uh, Lisa's not on either, is she? No, I don't see her. Um, okay. I'm here. And then we'll have the scripture reading, which is Colossians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, will be read by Dr. Carol Miller. And our scripture readers are Dr. Kara Miller and Latara Burley. Good evening, class. We revive our hearts in the mind a moment and just give thanks to Yahweh through his son, Yahshua Messiah, that he continue holding us up and that we can still stand on that foundation that he has given us with the witnesses and just hold fast to what is happening in the world now, his purpose. And, and that's his purpose, pattern, and plan. And just love the brother. With all these blessings and many more, let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll be <clears throat> reading 2 Corinthians chapter 11 from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, 
critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by A.B. Train of the Scripture Research Association. Would that ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed ye do bear with me. For I am zealous over you with a zeal for Yahweh. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to the Messiah. But I fear, lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the Messiah. For if he that cometh preacheth another Messiah, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another evangel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with me. For I reckon I was not a whip behind the very chiefest apostles, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted? because I have preached to you the glad tidings of Yahweh freely. I robbed other assemblies, taking wages of them to do you service. And when I was present with you and was in need, I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. As the truth of the Messiah is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, Yahweh knoweth. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of the Messiah, and no marvel, for Satan transformeth himself into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I say again, let no man think me a fool. If otherwise, yet is a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. At which I speak... I speak not according to Yahweh, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit, whereinsoever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Are thy Hebrews? So am I. Are thy Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of the Messiah? I speak as a fool, I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received, I forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that's that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the assemblies. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The Almighty Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Aratas, the king, kept the city of Damascus with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me. And in a basket through a window was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. Second Corinthians 11th chapter that was.
Hallelujah. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody. Our first speaker will be uh, Dr. Gail Josephson from the Green Bay, Wisconsin class. Hi, everybody. Hey, Gail. Hi. Um, this is quite a scripture. Um, I think Chuck had told me that we should work with the mystery of iniquity, so I've been thinking about it for a few, few days, but not that I'm going to um, do a lot here, but I can work with a couple things. Um, and by the mystery of iniquity, I mean that um, that there is a opposer of righteousness, and um, uh, and I guess uh, uh, you know when you think of maybe Satan or the devil, um, mm -hmm. our aim. Um, can somebody read our aim about Satan and his demons? Because we have 10 aims, and I don't know if you've listened to them or if you've studied them or if you're new. Um, can you read that, please, one of the readers? I, I can go ahead and um, just say it. I think it's the seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Okay, so um, we have it listed in our aims that it's a mystery. And um, when we think of maybe um, Satan and the devil, um, we would think of uh, maybe scams on uh, telephone scams of, you know, to old ladies or, or ladies, I should say, or, um, or some mass murderers. But it's a mystery. And Yahshua has it um, so that we really... Um, don't un understand all of the implications, of course, um, scamming people or stealing or um, murdering people are not good. It definitely is not a righteous attribute. Um, but what we can show where the mystery is, we can, we can, we've had the mystery revealed to us. So let's just read um, in this scripture. Um, Starting at the 13th verse, please. 2 Corinthians 11 and 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of the Messiah. Okay, and no stop marvel. Right. Please, just a minute. Um, so he, they're talking about false, false, prop, false apostles, ones that are not going to teach the truth. And um, they're going to be deceitful, and they're going to transform themselves into the apostles of the Messiah. Um, and one way to do that, I want to get Romans um, 1 and um, 16, or um, maybe a little further down, <coughs> um, about holding the truth and unrighteousness. Because... Uh, okay. okay. Go ahead with that. I, I hold your um, place there with the um, in the scripture reading tool. Go ahead with Romans. Uh, I'm looking for the one about truth. Let's see. Is it uh, the 25th? Oh, okay. it's way down in 25. Okay. Uh, who changed the truth of Elohim into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who was blessed forever? Wow. Yeah, that gets right into it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so it, what, the, the way that um, we look at it down here in this school is that um, um, that not everybody knows um, how the ministry of iniquity works. And um, I think when I was out in church, I, I guess I never really even heard, we never talked about the devil. Um, that was just not part of the mass <laughs> that we went to in, in church every week. So what we want to do here is explain how the mystery of iniquity works. So they changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie. 
And um, the first place that was done was with um, Eve, and that was um, talked about a little bit in the scripture. So let's get in Genesis. And I know I'm just touching on these things, but wow, there's a, a lot to be explained in these verses. <laughs> you want to so start at Genesis uh, 3 and 1? Um, I got to get it. I'm not sure where it is. Okay, 3 and 1 would be great. Uh, no, I want the second chapter with the commandment because um, Joshua has set up a, a law. And um, if you didn't keep the law, you had um, consequences. So let's get what commandment Adam and Eve had in the garden. Did you know that there was even a commandment that they had to keep? Okay. 16. Okay. I believe. Yes. All right. Yep. Let's Go try this. Three and 16. Two and yep. sixteen. Two. Two. Yep. Two and sixteen. I'm sorry. Yeah. Two and sixteen. And out of the ground Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought okay. them unto um hold it right there. Um can you just make sure you're in the second chapter and yeah, that's reading. not the yeah. second. That, that's a holy name. Reading out a holy, holy name. name. I'm sorry. Okay, oh, Carol. Right. Okay. All right, and Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Okay, now the man, it's um, actually um, Adam. And Yahweh gave him a commandment. I didn't know that Adam had a commandment. And the commandment is, um, out of every tree of the garden, you can eat freely. And um, it doesn't sound like a bad thing, really, but... Um, Keep going, read 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Mm -hmm. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay, so there's a tree that's in the midst of the garden. There's two trees, but he's saying you cannot eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It says they can't eat that one. So, and if they do, they, he would surely die. Now, um, that tree was in the midst of the garden, like I said, and you know they passed by that all the time. And um, um, now I want to get into the third chapter. And if they did eat it, uh, wait a minute. Let me just say this. Um, um, read that again, Carolyn. Seventeen, please. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in, the day that, uh, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay, now it doesn't say um, if you eat it, you're going to die. It says when you eat it, you're going to die. Okay, so he's, say, um, so he's got this commandment and Yash was telling him, you're going to eat it. And then the day that you do that, you're going to die. He didn't say if you eat it. So now let's get into three and one with, um, in Genesis. <clears throat> three and one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which Yahweh Elohim had made. And okay, he said, now, the, now Adam and Eve <laughs> garden. Um, can I get up the um, elementary chart, please? And then um, with the plate with Adam and Eve. Okay, so the serpent was in the garden. He was more subtle than any beast of the field. Now subtle um, means that he's, he's going to be more slick and he's going um, he's gonna to have more on the ball. And do you know that you can be deceived by somebody when they come up to you and, and they really sound good? Um, I, I'm really yeah. not going to deceive you saying, you know, I, I want you to send me $100 just because I want you to. The scam is going to be, send me $100 or $500 or $600 because um, your son is going to be arrested because he doesn't have his driver's license with him. And, and it sounds good. My mom went through this. She was scammed because it sounded good to her. Okay, if they would have just said, just send me $500 because I want it, she would have said, no way. But it sounded good to her. So she tried to get the money and it didn't go through. Um, it was with the um, gift cards from Target and good thing her eyesight wasn't good enough. She couldn't read the numbers to send them. So anyway, that worked out good. But 
being deceived is they're going to be subtle about it and they're going to um, sound good and that's how you're going to fall for it. So the serpent was subtle. Okay, now um, if you look on the left hand side of the chart, that's where we have the transgression and that's what this is in the garden where Adam and Eve are going to fall for what Satan says and only because he was actually a beautiful creature back there and he um, let's um, read in three and one please now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made and right. he said to the woman yea hath Elohim said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden Okay, now, and, the, and um, the, the serpent is really Satan back there. He was a beautiful creature. And he's saying, now, did Yahweh tell you that he's, um, um, that you can't eat of the tree of the garden? Now, how did he even know that? Because he was back there when Yahweh gave Adam that commandment not to eat. Okay, all right, continue on. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Uh -huh. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim, Elohim hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Okay, now she's telling him what the commandment is. And um, that was true. He said, um, Yahweh Elohim had told Adam, you can't eat of that tree. And so she's letting Satan know that. Now what Satan's doing is, oh, it, um, Read four. I don't think and we read it. Four is in the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Right. He's a liar. You right. shall not surely die. He's just contradicting what Elohim had told Adam. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in the day you eat it, you shall surely die. And you say, oh, no, you're not going to die. Well, that sounds good. I would, and if it's a beautiful creature, I might believe it. And we would believe it if we were back there, okay? So um, what happened is, is, and you can read it in the New Testament, is that, or no, I think it's in here, that the woman gave me to eat. Yeah, I think it's down further in three. Because then they did eat. She offered the fruit to Adam, and he ate it um, because she, well, she offered it to him. Um, and then Elohim, of course, knew about it. So he's questioning them. And you know what? They did die. As soon as they ate that, they realized that they were naked and they suffered condemnation. Okay. Now, um, I was going to show you on the chart, but I just want to get this first. Well, on that, on the upper portion in the top plate, on the, on the left-hand side is the first plate. And we have these divided in three. So the upper one would be where the um, serpent is beguiling Eve. And then the next one is where they're being driven out of the garden because they did die. And when they died, they had to be buried and they had to be expelled from that garden. They were expelled by an angel of Yahweh. Okay, so um, let's read. Um, Let's start at nine, three and nine, please. Three and Yahweh, nine. Oh, go ahead. And Yahweh Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he okay, said, so what they did, they hid from Elohim. They knew that they, they knew that they had disobeyed that commandment. Okay, and Yahweh's saying, where are you? Because they were hiding. Go ahead. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Right. Mm -hmm. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should, shouldest not eat? And right. the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Right. So he ate because she offered him the fruit. And what he was doing was laying down his life for, for his bride because he knew that he, this was not going to be good. If she, she ate the fruit, she was going to die. So he was going to do the same thing. So he, he, wanted, he, wanted his, mm -hmm. he wanted the wife. He asked Yahweh for a help meet. So he wasn't going to live without her. That was his gift from Yahweh, actually. So what happened, um, they were expelled from the garden by uh, an angel, which is in that center plate. And I'm trying to point, but I can't. <laughs> um, so they were, 
they were beguiled by Satan, okay? And he, he, one of the attributes, or one of his characteristics is he's a liar, okay? And I, um, I had already gone over that. So let's get, um, I want to go back to um, the scripture reading and start at 13 again, 11 and 13. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians 11 and 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostle of the Messiah. Okay, so right there, that's what exactly what Satan did back there in the garden. He transformed himself into an apostle of the Messiah, or the apostle of God is what we would have said before we came here into this teaching. Okay, he transformed himself um, that he was going to be um, telling the truth and that he was actually like Yahweh had sent him onto them. Okay. All right. Keep going. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Right. And it Satan has transformed himself into, or he has transformed Satan into an angel of light. And that's, he looked beautiful back there. Okay. And it, he was believable when he told Eve, that no, you you're not going to die. All right, go ahead. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as a ministers of righteousness, mm -hmm. who, whose ends shall be according to their works. Okay, I, so but um, that's all I wanted from there. Let's go back into Romans, and I do I want to pick it up even from where you were. That was just a wonderful scripture there in the twenties. But I just want to get. Um, 17, I think. Yeah, Romans I 1, 17. For yeah. therein is the righteousness. Yes. For, for therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Right. Okay. And 18 I want, actually. For the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from heaven against all wickedness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Okay, so there's an unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And that truth of unrighteousness is anything that goes against what Yahweh has said. Okay, so um, to hold the, the truth in unrighteousness, and actually I, I really never understood this until just maybe a couple months ago, a few months ago when this whole COVID thing started and people were talking about, I'm not ashamed of this gospel, which is in 16, but to hold the truth in unrighteousness is to know something about Yahweh that's um, you, which is a tenant and that is um, provable and um, to hold the truth and unrighteousness and then to change that, okay? And the way I learned it, and this doesn't have anything to do with, um, you know, like what I, you know, I've been watching a lot of YouTube and um, a lot of different lectures like in the last two weeks or so and, um, so this is like three or four months ago. I finally understood this by looking at one thing that's true about Yahweh is his name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahshua. And to change that into unrighteousness. Now, the Catholic Church um, has wanted us not, first of all, it says don't use the name Yahweh. And then one of the popes just recently um, said, oh, we can start using the name Yahweh in our songs because that's really his name and it's fine. And then they reversed that tenant and said, let's not use the name of Yahweh because that might offend the Jews, okay? Now, what is, what is the truth about it? The truth is his name is Yahweh. So what the Pope was doing, he knew the truth, he changed it into unrighteousness. And that's where it says that um, they transform themselves into um, you know, angels of light and they change um, they change the truth of Yahweh, okay? And it makes it into a lie. You can't do that. Um, you can't do that and get away with it, that's for sure. Okay, so the wrath of Yahweh will be revealed. And then it goes on to, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has showed it unto them. Okay, so just skip down, and, and this is going to be my last verses, that one that you had just picked up. Was it 25? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, check that one up again, please. Who changed the truth of Elohim into a lie and worship uh -huh. 
and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Right. So he changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie. And they worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. And you, you can't change um, Yahweh's name. You can't change it to Lord and God and make it believable. Um, no matter how good you look or how great garments the Pope wears. And, and I'm only picking on him, you know, with this one thing. And I was a Catholic and I was duped. I mean, those priests looked wonderful to me. And I believed what they said until I started checking things out for myself and realized that um, there's something more out in the world <laughs> that I was not exposed to when I was going to the church. Okay, so it, um, that, that was my last scripture. Um, I hope it made sense to you. And um, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to address you about um, one of Yahshua's um, truths in righteousness. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay, our next speaker will be Latara Burley. Oh, okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> Unexpected. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I enjoyed that, and I'm um, just thankful that Yahweh has allowed me to um, even partake in this gospel and like the previous speaker was saying, talking about the mystery of iniquity, how uh, he changes. He's he's an opposer of Yahweh and how uh, you have to be careful because he does change. He makes himself into a minister of um, Yahweh. But, you know, Yahweh has given, well, that's one of the eight, like she said, one of those aims is, to avoid um, being deceived and also to discern and to be able to discern, you know, you have to have on, you know, those spiritual glasses, if you, you know, if I can say it that way, to be able to detect the lie because the truth nowadays, people, the truth looks like a lie and a lie looks like the truth. So you have to really be able to wean out, you know, those lies, like she was saying. And um, Yahshua has given us a way, Yahweh has given us a way through Yahshua Messiah to be able to detect the lie. You know, he's given us that lie detector. Like you always have, you know, they have lie detector tests. But Yahshua has given us that. And the way that we can dispel that lie or, you know, be able to discern is he's given us a, a a way of escape and it's through that pattern it's through you know the law and the prophets it's through preaching the gospel and you know like she was pointing out on that first chart you know of how the serpent did be beguile eve and he was that he did transform himself into a minister or you know angel of light but we can see according to that pattern how that everything must go through a death burial and a resurrection and even though yahweh put can we go back to uh genesis yahweh put that um tree in the midst of the garden but then he told them that you know, don't touch it or don't eat it. But he put that tree in the midst of that garden because Yahweh already knew what was going to happen. It was for a purpose, you see. And the mystery of iniquity is just a, a another. Um, how can I put it? He's just a, a character too that Yahweh is just using for his purpose. So he he is a opposer, and and Yahweh has set set him up to be that opposer but it's for the it all works together for the purpose and plan of salvation of yahweh which is through yashua the messiah so if we can go um let me see what he uh we talks about that tree putting that tree in the midst of that garden that's uh two and three did, did you want to pick it up at all mm -hmm. um, and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, 
um, Elohim has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So now why would Yahweh put the tree in the midst of the garden and then tell them, don't eat it? <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, and this, this is another state, you know, just like that Romans 1, 19 and 20, how he's um, showing that they were innocent. They were like children, you know, and so they had no, um, they, they didn't um, transgress or whatever, as you can say, yet. So he put it in the midst of the garden, but then that here comes that serpent, you know, just comes slicking, sliding along like he always does and um, continue pick up from there. Four, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. So For he opposed Yahweh. See, Yahweh says one thing, the serpent has to say another. So how will we be able to tell the difference between the truth and the lie? Because Yahweh says you're going to die in the day that you eat. And a serpent said, you shall not surely die. And it's just one word he said that that changed it. And see, see how slick that is? Just mm -hmm. one word. He said, you shall not surely die. And so we have to be careful and we have to listen to everything you know, when, when we're, uh, when somebody presents something to us, especially with this gospel, because they, it's just that one word that they can just slide in and we can agree with that and, or we can go along with that. And that could change our whole state and condition of existence. It's so, it, it seems so simple, but yet it's so complicated. Just one word can change our whole state of existence to, from life to death. And so Yahweh always saying, hear, O Israel, hear, you know what I mean? So just, just look how the state and condition of Adam in that peaceful, Adam and Eve in that uh, innocent state, in that peaceful state of mind condition. And Yahweh says, in the day you're, you eat or touch it, you are going to die. And Satan came and changed one word. And that took down the whole mankind from that one word. But keep going from there. For Elohim doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So we shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. But Yahweh knew that, you know, Satan, Satan already knew. But of course, it goes according to the purpose and plan of Yahweh. Keep going. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Mm -hmm. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So now their state and condition has changed. They were innocent, they didn't know that they were naked, and now they know that they're naked, so they sold something together to cover themselves up. But Satan has, it says he has great wisdom. He's, he's full of wisdom. Go to um, Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, I believe. 20, is it 28 and start at, pick it up at, hmm. I guess just start at one. You got it, Pam. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Ezekiel 28 and 1. The word of Yahweh came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am an Elohim, I sit in the seat of Elohim in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not so, hold, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's so much in here when you read. <laughs> so he said, so pick it up, pick it up. He said, because thine heart is lifted up and just um, kind of read it slowly. Mm -hmm. Because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am an Elohim. I am an Elohim. I sit in the seat of Elohim. So he sit in the seat of Elohim. So <laughs> my goodness. So in that most holy place. So he's talking about sitting in that high seat. He's talking about being uh, higher than Elohim or sitting on that uh, mercy seat or being like a, a judge, being like that judge 
of Elohim um, talking about in that most holy place. He said he sit in the seat of Elohim. So he's making himself like unto Elohim. Keep going. In the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not Elohim, though thou set thine heart as the heart of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. And we know Daniel was wise. Daniel was very wise, but he says, "Thou art wiser than El thou art wi wiser than Daniel." I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. There is going. no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches, and hast gotten gold and silver under thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Because so that mystery of iniquity has great wisdom. You see, he's not he's he's not like a man where you know some people may think they have wisdom, but that mystery of iniquity is hard to to be able to um you like I said, you have to have your your lie detector eyes on to be able to detect that lie um go over to um i think it's in matthew where yahshua was being tempted by that mystery of iniquity when he was in the wilderness and um yet again he opposed um the messiah and he when he was talking about let me see he tempted him when he was in the wilderness Wait, I want to get okay. Okay, mm. yeah, four and one. Um, I can four start right. One. Yeah, I can. all right, four and one. Then was Joshua led up of the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of Yahweh command that those stones be made bread, that these mm -hmm. stones be made bread. Mm -hmm. but he so, answered, once, so again, I'm sorry. So there again, he's, he's see, Satan, he is that tempter. See, he tempted Eve and um, Adam in the garden, you see, and now he's tempting um, the Messiah here in the wilderness. So that, that is his job, to, to oppose and to tempt Yahweh. Keep going. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, if thou be the son of Elohim, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Yashua See, Satan said, is bold. I'm sorry. He, he's really bold here. <laughs> Go, mm -hmm. Keep going. Yahshua said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt Yahweh thy Elohim. Okay, so he says it is written, he said it is written again, thou shalt not mm -hmm. tempt Yahweh thy Elohim. But, you know, he's going to continue to do it because that is what his purpose is. That is the, you know, what Yahweh created him for. He said, again, it is written, thou shalt not tempt Yahweh thy Elohim. Keep going. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. And then he did it again. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and showed him you know, all the these things in this world. <laughs> he showed him again. He, he, he told him, thou shalt not tempt him. And then Satan, go ahead. And he <laughs> tempted him again. He took them up into an exceeding high mountain. See what I'm saying? Keep going. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the magnificence of them. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Okay, so if he will fall down and worship me and um, you, he, you will go back into, well, I don't want to go back into, but in uh, Exodus, when uh, Yahweh has said that thou shalt not worship any other but Yahweh, thou shalt not make any uh, graven images. And Satan is saying here, and, uh, say, and say it unto him, all these things I will give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. 
Keep going. Then saith Yahshua unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship Yahweh thy Elohim, and him only shall and thou. And him only. Mm -hmm. And that's written all throughout the scriptures, that's written from the very beginning. Yahweh told the children of Israel that worship no other Elohim besides him. Okay, so um, go, I guess, go um, to the scripture reading. I mean, we can we can keep going. Uh, it's so much in here showing how that Mister of Iniquity he he is that opposer and that he that we're not going to be able to escape Yahweh's wrath, but that Satan has great wrath against the people here. And we can go before we get that. Go to uh, Revelations, the twelfth chapter, before we go to the scripture reading. And pick it up, uh, go to um, 7. Pick it up at 7. Revelation 12 and 7. And there was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Mm -hmm which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. See, and a lot of people don't believe that they are deceived or they were deceived. I know prior to coming to class, I didn't know that I didn't know that I wasn't deceived. You know, I thought, you know, the church was the, the, the best thing in the world. I thought, you know, going to church every Sunday I thought you know paying tithes I thought doing the uh the the supper the so-called Lord suppers and taking a communion you know that's what I thought was being saved but little did I know that I was deceived and I didn't even know I was deceived but here it's in the scriptures and I didn't even have the eyes I mean I had the bible but I didn't even have the eyes to see in the scriptures that it said that Satan deceiveth the whole world. So that that included everybody that's, you know, in the world that has been deceived. But I didn't know that. I didn't have that way of proving. I didn't have proof. I didn't have witnesses to be able to tell, you know, that truth from the lie. Um, we keep going. Pick it up here. Keep going. Mm -hmm. And I just interject. Um, okay, 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Messiah. Mm -hmm. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. So he's accused of the El So he's a, he was alive before Elohim day and night. And oh my goodness, that we can go back. How, so Satan doesn't rest. We know that he says day and night he accused um, the brethren. And when you go back in Job and you read Yahweh's, um, when Yahweh uh, called the sons of Elohim, Satan came also. And, you know, Yahweh asked Satan, you know, where did you come from? And he said, from walking up and down and to and fro in the earth plane. So, you know, Satan is on his job 24-7. So it's, you know, it's even more for us to be able to be able to or to be able to how can I say it we got to be on our job not 24 7 because we know we got to sleep but <laughs> we have to be able to discern and avoid being deceived by you know the many names that he has trying to uh, change the messiah to all these different names that just keep popping up and coming up and, you know, taking the name of Yahweh away from us. We have to be able to tell, you know, the truth, the lie from the truth. And we're not going to be able to do it, do that unless we have, you know, those witnesses, unless we stick to what Yahshua has given us, unless we stick to the, to the vision and the vision is, is, 
it's not a lie. It's all throughout the scriptures. It's going to line up. Like the scripture said, it's going to be line upon line. It's going to be precept upon precept. Those are the things that that's the key. That's the witnesses that the Messiah has given us you know, that we can be able to stand on and we can have a firm belief in the truth. And, you know, when, when you use the, the, the scriptures, the laws, the prophets, line upon line, that casts out all doubt, that casts out all, um, you know, those uh, unrighteous, you know, demons or, the, or those thoughts or theories that we have in our head. Um, is there any more here? Is there any more before I go on? Um, talks about he has but a short time. Okay, so Satan knows he has um, but a short time. So let's go to the scripture reading and then uh, pick it up a little bit and then I'll be done. Where do you want to start? Um, 11 and... Let's start at three. Okay. That's Second Corinthians eleven three. But I fear lest by any means, as the servant beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the Messiah. Mm-hmm. So it's through his subtlety. And so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the Messiah. So this is simple. You know, we make it hard. This is not, like like they say, it's, it's so simple that a child can understand it. And that is the way that Yahweh has set it up through Dr. Kenley is to keep it simple. He said all, all the time I read the transcripts, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you keep it simple, you have no room for error. You have no room for um, any other thoughts, theories, and, your, and opinions or confusion coming in because everything is lined up. You can go straight to the law. You can go straight to the prophets and see what someone is saying or see what they're talking about. You can go to the charts and you can see, oh, I see that. You know, it's simple. It's A, B, C, one, two, three. But when you are over the place and you're saying things and nobody can follow or nobody can understand you, it's going to be confusion there. It's the simplicity of the gospel that keeps our minds. It's the simplicity of the gospel that keeps us coming back because guess what? That's how we learned when we first came into class. When we, when we didn't come, when we wasn't in class, it was confusion out there in the world. I know for a fact the pastor can say 12,000 words and I walk outside Sunday, I didn't understand that one thing he said. Because it was not simple. It was all over the place. There's a guideline. And I say this all the time. It, this is a school and this is not a church. Dr. Kinley says that all the time. This is a school. So in a school, we always, you have a curriculum. A Romans 1, 19 and 20. When you go to college, when you go to high school, when you're elementary school, there is a curriculum and a guideline that the students must follow, that the teachers must follow, and the teachers get it from the state. And the state has to be approved by whoever, but there's a guideline that you have to follow when you're in school. So Yahshua has given us a guideline through Dr. Kenley. He has given us a guideline to follow. And it's through the simplicity. It's through the law and the prophets. It's through, you know, it's, he says, ABC, one, two, three. It's the preaching of the gospel. It's line upon line. It's precept upon precept. That way we can be able to stick to what, was given to us and when we stick to what was given to us and we leave it alone exactly how we receive it we are safe we are in that ark we are just like with noah you know it was through blood water spirit 40 that noah he got in the ark it was through blood water spirit 40 that the children of israel got out of egypt it was through blood water spirit 40 or death burial resurrection that noah um was able to be um cast out of that that the belly of that fish and you can go through all the scriptures. It wasn't through anything else but blood, water, spirit, 40, or death, burial, resurrection that either, either one of them got out. And it was through blood, water, spirit, 40 that we even came into existence. It was through death, burial, and resurrection that we even, even had life within us. And it's a repetition that, that goes on over and over again. And Dr. Kelly, I was talking about that sunset and sunrise. That's the death, a burial, and the resurrection. And he repeats that over and over again. And guess what? If that death, burial, resurrection doesn't occur, 
we are we are dead physically mm -hmm. so because we can't live without the sun and that's the death burial resurrection so spiritually so if we don't go through that death burial resurrection guess what we we can't live without yashua the messiah and that's the romans 1 19 and 20. so if you keep it simple like he like he has set it up if you keep that curriculum that yashua has given us you are in that art of safety you, you would not get that wrath of Yahweh that he talks about in the scriptures here. So, you know, brethren, I just, you know, encourage you that, you know, Yahweh has shown me over and over again, just keep it simple, follow that guideline and we are safe. We are in that art. And, you know, I just encourage anyone to keep coming back, read the transcripts over and over again. Dr. Kenley's talking about, you know, how the end of this age ended in 1960 and we are in that probationary period. We really are with, through, through these times. And, you know, the Day of Atonement is coming up. And he always talked about, look at um, the events that happened within the earth plane, you know, leading up to that Day of Atonement. So, you know, brethren, we have to keep our eyes open because Yahweh is giving us witness after witness of these things, repeating itself over and over again so that we will not be lost and that so we will not be um like those uh versions without that oil we we need we want to have that oil within us we don't want to go out and go look for that oil we need to have it now and that's a that's the aim to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of yashua the messiah is not later is now so um with that i thank you for the time and if you know anybody get anything out of it just praise yashua hallelujah thank you hallelujah Okay, our next speaker will be Dr. Charles Marshall. I opened up my big mouth, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed that, Tara, and, uh, and also Gail. I didn't know I said anything about getting into Satan, Gail, but whatever. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, uh, I got a little something here. Uh, go to... Uh, I think it's uh, Matthew, the 17th chapter. Let's see. And where do you want me to start? Uh, I want you to start at uh, 20, please. 20? Yes, 20. Matthew 17, 20. And Yahshua said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now, I've always looked at that verse there and kind of thought, Wow, that'd be something else to move mountains, you know. And in the other day, let's get Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, okay, verse 1. The other day, I was looking through Ezekiel, and I came across this, and it kind of kind of uh, opened it up to me. Let's see, it was 13, I'm sorry, if uh, e Ezekiel 13, or I'm sorry, 36, verse 1. Yes, that's what I think I said. Okay. Ezekiel 36 and 1. Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yahweh. Read. Keep going. Thus says Yahweh, thy Elohim, because the enemy have said against you, aha, even the ancient, the ancient high places are ours in possession. See Therefore, now. Okay, that's good. I think, I think that got the point across. The mountains are the people. Of Israel so mountains can also be people so therefore when he was saying that we could move mountains basically that's what we come to class to do we're here we're here we're preaching this gospel we're doing this to move mountains and how do you move a mountain you see by preaching to it and it receiving the Holy Spirit and you have definitely moved it from death to life you know, boy I tell you when I read that I, when I seen that it was like oh man that is cool you know it's not talking about physical a physical mountain. It's talking about people, you know. And it may and, and now it really even makes more sense to me. Now you go to I think it's uh, uh, 
Luke, yeah, Luke 6. Yeah. Uh, Luke uh, 17, 6. Luke 17 and 6. If I can get there. Luke 17 and 6. And Yahweh saith, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine, sick, sycamine tree. It's a sycamore. Be, yeah. Okay. A sycamore sycamine. tree. I'm sorry. It is a sycamine. Yeah. Okay. Sycamine tree. Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in a seed, and it should obey you. See, now, but, once again, if you have faith as a mustard seed, now what does Yahweh say? We are trees as walking. So once again, it's talking, this time it's using a sycamore tree. But remember, Yahweh always preaches and teaches in parables. You understand? So I just thought that was cool when I came across that, and I started look, looking up the different times that he said that. It was about four times in the in the New Testament that he talks about having the faith, and uh, and it's talking about a mount, mountains, and it's talking about sycamore trees, and you can find where that's talking about people. And I thought that was rather unique and rather interesting. Okay, could we go back to Ezekiel thirty six, please? And this time uh, we will start at thirty four. Ezekiel thirty six thirty four. Now here in this. Yahweh is talking, is actually making a, uh, this is a prophecy, all right? And the world out here still does not believe that this prophecy has taken place, all right? They're still waiting for this to happen. We all, we already know that it's, that it's happened, and uh, well, we'll get into it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Go ahead. Ezekiel 36, 34, and the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, 36, 24? Ezekiel. Oh, no, I'm on 34. 24 you want? Well, th 30, uh, I want uh, Ezekiel 36, 24. For I, I will take you from ahead. among, oh, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Now the world out here thinks that that has not happened. They think that that happened with Israel back in about 1945 when they become the state of Israel. You see, they think that that's possibly happened, but what he's talking about here is the United States. Now this also happened, I'll put it like this. This happened actually at Pentecost because at Pentecost, they were all there for the 50th or for Pentecost, okay? They were all there for the 50th year uh, celebration. So they, they, the Jews that came from all parts of the country, okay, at, at Pentecost, and so that's what this is talking about here. They don't realize it was already fulfilled. And also, if you look at it, you can look at it as a type and a shadow of the United States, where all these people from all over the world have come together to, in one place. And they call this the land of milk and honey. They call this Canaan's land. That's why the world are beating down their doors to try, try to come in here. That's, we, this, this country was built upon immigration, you understand? And and because Yahweh brought us all in so that he could preach and he could teach to us. It goes to show that uh, it talks about how Yahweh's thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways, all right? Well, we think, and when I was in the church, like you guys were in the church, they told us that we had to give money for the missionaries fund so that the missionaries could go over to all these places and preach the gospel because they were trying to fulfill there in Matthew uh, you know, go into the world, preach, therefore, uh, uh, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching, you know, well, we thought that we had to go out. Once again, this is Yahweh showing, okay, that he's the one that's doing the work, he's the one that's in charge, and he's the one doing it, okay? Read on, please. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols, will I cleanse you. See, now, now we're, we are getting sprinkled with clean water, all right? In other words, we're getting that, that gospel. Where is it? Is it in John, uh, the seventh chapter, I believe it is, where he's talking to the woman in the well. And then, uh, and then there's another place, I believe the 14th, it's a, long, a little further down in John, uh, where he's talking about living water.
I know the things were in the book. I just can't never remember them. And I would say that I'm getting old and I have a bad memory, but uh, I've never been good at remembering scriptures. <laughs> John, you say the seventh chapter? Yeah, it's where the woman is at the well. The Samaritan woman. I may be all wet. <laughs> Chapter four is the woman at the well. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Chapter four. Thank you. Yes. Seven. Okay. You want to start at... Uh... Well, let's Let start see. right at, uh, I believe, uh, in seven. Okay. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yahshua saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were going away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Yahshua answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of Yahweh, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me drink, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Now here he's talking about, you know, this is before his death, burial, and resurrection. So he's talking about really on the day of Pentecost. All right, read. The woman saith unto him, Sir, Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which have gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? So this, is Jacob, this is Jacob's well, like you read about in the Old Testament with Jacob, all right? Read. Yahshua answered and saith unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. See, so this is the water, the living water that he's talking about. Now, see, just like Jacob at the well was talking to a woman here, Yahshua was fulfilling and talking to a woman and talking to her about the everlasting, the the wellspring of everlasting water what is now that's uh did anybody know where that was at no okay uh i can try to find it well, i thought that john seven thirty eight. okay there's the john seven okay thank you <laughs> read, from 30, read from 37 john, john said go ahead turn okay okay john seven and thirty seven in the last day, that great day of the feast, Yahshua stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So that's, see, that's the sprinkling. That's the clean water that's being talked about here. You see, it's living water. Now, like I said, I've got a, I've got a, a Bible here. It's a, a Dake Bible, and it's a, a Christian scholar put it together, and here he's saying, you know, at the 36th chapter that these things, uh, it prophecies, and it has not been fulfilled yet. So they do not understand this stuff. This is how extremely lucky we are in this class. And what we, and what he says there, out of your bellies of, shall flow the rivers of living water, he that believeth on the scriptures. Now, and we know that the scriptures is the law and the prophet. We know how important the law and the prophet and, and the fulfillment and him coming in. So here, this is all talking about here in Ezekiel. Now, here a while back, somebody was talking about uh, predestination. And he was talking about, you know, the, what, Yah, what Yahweh knows, you know, gonna happen. And all the time here, he's telling what's going to happen. And then he comes in and he fulfills it, or if he did it. Back in the Old Testament, the law and the prophets are the witnesses. And then Yahshua came in and did it. So here he's talking that he's going to sprinkle clean water upon you and clean you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. He is cleansing us from our, from our uh, theories, our concepts, and our opinions that we had of our creator. He's, somebody one time asked me if we did brainwash. He said, I think you people brainwash down there. And I said, yeah, I agree with you. We do. 
Yeah, we do put, we do with clean water, with living water, we clean your brain from all your filthiness, from all your idols, from all the things that you think that are wrong about your creator. Yes, we do. We do wash your brain. It is cleansed. So I guess we can be accused of brainwashing down here. You understand? Okay. Read, would you go back to uh, 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 Ezekiel, please, uh, verse 26 now. Uh, 36 and 26. Yes, please. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. Now, and we, I will now we know that that happened at the day of Pentecost, okay? That he would give us it because he'd give you a new heart. One way, I tell you, you know that you, that you, they say, Dr. Kinley used to say, one way you know if you've got the Holy Spirit is if you love the brother. Well, that is so true because I, I know like me, I'm pretty hard to love and a lot of people love me, you know, I'm not, it's not worth it. You know, I'm not worth it, but they do, you know, and why do they love me? Obviously they think they might see a spark of goodness in me. That just might be the Holy spirit. You know, I'm thankful for that. And I tell you what, there's a lot of people in this class. I'm not going to mention any names. You understand <laughs> that I know are pretty dead burn contrary and can be pretty hard to get along with from a physical standpoint. But when I look at that person and I listen to that person talk to me about Yahweh and Yahshua, the Messiah, I see and I know the Holy Spirit is there. And it causes me and it causes us to overlook all these idiosyncrasies, I call them, that we have, you see, and that we can look through all that, we can look past the flesh, and we can see Yahshua abiding in there and dwelling in there, because he's given us a new heart. He's taken away that stony heart, just like when Moses came down from that mountain. He took that heart from the mountain down with the Ten Commandments on it, okay, and he saw the people sinning, and he broke those stones. And it's like I've said many times, when I was in church, they said, that that showed me that I shouldn't get angry because if you get angry, you see, you're, 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 you, you could destroy things. But they didn't have the slightest idea what was going on. Showing forth, and that's showing forth that that old covenant, that old covenant did not get into that tabernacle. The tabernacle hadn't been built yet. He broke it. So then Moses told him to hew out some stones. Now this time Moses hewed it out in a heart to show forth that this was his heart. And he took that up to the mountain and Yahweh wrote the commandments in there. And then he brought that down and that got into the ark, showing forth that the first covenant or the first set of stones did not get into the people. But at the day of Pentecost, you understand, when, when, he, when he put that in that tabernacle, that's showing that the second set of stones or the second covenant would be put in your heart, would be put in your mind. It's not going to be the old Chuck anymore. It's not going to be the old, uh, any of us anymore. He's made us a new creature and we are getting it piecemeal. It's being taken from us a little at a time. It's like hewing down a mountain. They will go in when they uh, uh, strip mine a mountain and they're going there and they're hew it down and just take it right down. You understand? Yahweh is breaking down that old man, that old person in us. And he's given us a new heart. We don't think the way we used to think. We don't do things the way we used to do. And we don't treat people the same way we used to treat people. You understand? We're a different person now. A new heart. Okay. And 27, please. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. See, now, now he's going to put his spirit. He's going to put the Holy Spirit. He's going to put Yahshua, the Messiah, in you, you understand? That's where we're different than the rest of the people out here. The rest, th th these people out here, they do not have that Holy Spirit in them. When we, I, the one thing about the Zoom classes, we get to go to all these different classes, and we get to see all these different people. We get to hear all these different people. And I do not hear the people of the Institute freaking up out about what's going on right now out here in the world. We have a peace. We have a calm, you understand, within us because we understand what Yahweh is doing. We understand that Yahweh is warning them. He's trying to get them to turn to him. But you see, but they're not going to because you can see how stiff-necked they are out here. You tell them that they should wear a mask to protect other people. 
you know, they don't care. No. You understand? Mm -hmm. They don't care about anybody else. The only thing they care about themselves. You're taking my freedom away from me. Well, mm -hmm. you know, well, yeah, we're taking a little bit of freedom. What, what's, what, uh, do you put a mask on your face? You know, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of neat. Now you can walk into a bank with a mask on your face, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, but you understand, and the people out here are showing, it's just like uh, out in uh, Sturgis, South Dakota. They had a big motorcycle rally out there. A hundred thousand people. Uh, I don't know what they, the, 250. How, 250. I didn't hear thousand. the thousand. 250,000. Yeah, 250,000 right. people went out there. And when, the little bit that I saw, I didn't see very many of them wearing face masks. No. You see? Now, what, what's, what, what is it? You know, it's disobedience. And what do they say? You know, well, they say, well, you know, riding a motorcycle is freedom, and we're expressing our freedom. Well, I ride a motorcycle, and I express my freedom, but I don't go around not wearing a face mask, because what I'm doing by wearing a face mask is I'm protecting you, and I'm protecting me. You understand? But mostly they say it's so if you've got it, that you don't spread it. You understand? This it, this is showing forth the disobedience that's out here in this world. You understand? Now, if there's a disobedience in the world, that's just a type and a shadow of disobedience, you see, amongst, amongst the, uh, in class, you understand? We've got to be careful, just like people were saying. We've got to be careful here. We've got to listen very carefully to what people are saying, you understand? Because if you don't, look, Satan has got to get slicker and slicker and slicker. You understand? He's, he's tried this. It hasn't worked on us. He got some. He tried that. It didn't work on us. But he got some. You see, he's trying something over here. It didn't work on us. But he got some. And he's getting slicker and slicker and slicker. So you want to talk about how Satan's working. That's what he's doing. And like Tara was talking about, you understand? As long as we stick to the law and we stick to the prophet, you understand? and we stick to the what's written in the fulfillment, and we have a tabernacle pattern that was given to us, you understand, that we can take and put and slide rule. You know, I remember back when I was a kid, we had what they, they have computers now, but we had slide rules. And I actually learned how to use one. I couldn't do it today if I tried, but actually learned how to use, and you would put that down and you could figure you know things out with that, that slide rule, you understand? And this pattern is the same thing. It's like a slide rule. You can put it all the way across the Bible, all the stories in the Bible, and you can see, and you can see if everything lines up, you understand, and comes out with a predicted end. You understand? You've got the law. You've got the prophets. You understand? You've got the creation. We can take this very, it's so amazing. We can take this very same pattern, and we can take, and we can put it on the creation. And we can see the, how the creation is going according to this pattern right now. I tell you, there's all kinds of things going on. We've got the coronavirus. We had that big explosion over there in Lebanon. Holy mackerel, that killed, you know, they said a hundred some, uh, it, killed, it had to have killed thousands. There's over 300,000 people that are homeless. It destroyed their homes, you see. I tell you, it's a... And the, the government over there has resigned. Doc Kinley always said, keep your eye on the Middle East. This coronavirus, we've got to, you know, we're going to learn a lot, but keep your eye on the Middle East. I tell you, the whole government over there has resigned. Okay, now that's open. Oh boy, Hamas and all the, well, we won't even, just keep your eye over there. I tell you, it's, 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 it's heating up over there too. I tell you what, uh, I, I know, gloom and doom, Chuck, gloom and doom, but let me tell you something. Even, and I do believe that probably Biden will be our next president. I don't know. I, I, I haven't been given that, but I'm just going to put it like this. We have a complete government failure right now. I don't believe it matters who you put in there. I don't mm -hmm. believe it matters what they do or try to do. We have a government right now that is at a complete failure. They can't do nothing. Congress can't do nothing. You understand? And they're going to, and just as they're fighting each other, 
tooth and nail here with this president that we have in there, can't blame them, fighting tooth and nail, they're going to do the same thing no matter who's in there. So uh, I, 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 I guess I, I seen what happened with the civil rights movement. It went someplace for a little bit. There was a little bit of gain. But you know something? It was just a little bit of gain. There should have been a lot more gain. And there wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, now, it's all ba everybody's going to be a little bit excited. But I'm going to tell you something. I hope we have a little bit of gain. But, I, you know, uh, and I wish I, that it could, you understand? Because Yahweh has given us a new heart. And he's given us a new mind. And he doesn't care about skin color. He doesn't care what country you come from. He doesn't care about all that kind of nonsense. You understand? But because these people out here are so carnally minded, you see, you see, that's the division. They're, Satan and his house is divided amongst itself. And until Yahweh takes us out of here and gets us away from all this nonsense, you see, and gets us away from this, this uh, mystery of iniquity, you see, that just not having that mystery of iniquity to take and hound us and to try to uh, get us to go astray from this teaching and to try to get us mind off this teaching with all the physical stuff that's going around us. That not to have all that is is heaven itself. Let, uh, you know what I'm saying? You see, so that's what we've got going for us. Is we are. The, the physical creation may be deteriorating. Physical creation may be going through self-destruction. But let me tell you something. In this class, what I see with, in, with, in the body of, I won't even say in the class. I'll put it like that. In the body of Yahshua, the Messiah, what I see is peace, righteousness, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You understand? That's what we've got. And we've got a promise. We've got a promise that we'll be delivered from all this. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. But you see, we know it's true. Uh, when I was in Christianity, I was supposed to have a blind, but they just told me just to believe. And if I believed it, I'd be saved, you see. But here in this institute, we, we don't tell you to have blind belief. We say, look, we can prove it. We can show you. And like Latara was talking about, what is it? It's always going through every, you know, the stories that we go through here. Death, burial, resurrection, burial, resurrection, and then glorification. We will be glorified in that new earth state. You see? Now, okay, I, I don't think we got to 28 yet. Uh, Ezekiel 36, 28. Ezekiel 36 and 28, yep. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your Elohim. So here it's talking about he's going to give us a land, you understand, to dwell in. Now, that's not talking a physical land, you know, understand? That's talking about a spiritual land, you see? And right now, we tell people that right now today, you can be in heaven itself, or you can be in hell. If you're all caught up in the physical if you're all worried about the physical, you understand? If you're all worried about all that kind of stuff, you see, you're going to be in hell. But if you take and you keep your eyes on Yahshua, the Messiah, you know that he's given you a promise. He's knowing that he, you know that you've got glory, righteousness, peace, and joy ahead for you. That is the most calming. That is just, you, you couldn't, you couldn't be promised anything any better. And especially now in the times that we're going through now and the things that we're seeing now, we can really appreciate that message. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to the next speaker. I hope somebody got something out of that. And uh, uh, hallelujah, all praises to glory to Yahweh and his son, Yahshua, the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I did something with my screen, so. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, I really enjoyed uh, what Gail and Tara and Chuck got into. And um, I'd like to just maybe uh, uh, add a little bit to that and uh, um, continue on. And um, now, um, uh, 
I, I'm going to read a little bit out of um, a transcript. And it's called December 3rd, 1975, <clears throat> Erroneous Doctrine Preached from the Floor. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm starting on the second page. Okay. Um, let's see. So this is Dr. Kinley saying, he said, and you received it. Okay, what he's talking about is the gospel. Okay, so you received it. You received that gospel, and I preached it, and you received it. And the reason why you received it is because you can't refute it. Now, I don't care who you are. You can't refute it. You can't dispute it, not with this Bible. Oh, by the way, I want to stop there. And, uh, I, I, I think everybody has gotten a copy of that. There, there was a remastered uh, uh, transcript that Dr. Kinley got into, and it's what audio lecture. I'm sorry, it's not a transcript. Um, that they that's uh, one of the Kinley family had some tapes, and it, it never was uh, transcribed, and they they remastered it, and it sounds like it was made yesterday. Okay, and you can really hear. Um, it's surprising to me uh, how clear uh, his voice is on that. And he is, you know, in this, it, it just listening to, you know, the things he put emphasis on and stuff like that. And um, now I've heard people that sound kind of like him, like, you know, I heard um, from some of the uh, people that, that, that were eyewitnesses to Dr. Kinley that a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, uh, would try to imitate Dr. Kinley. And I've had um, one person say, oh, doesn't such and such sound like Dr. Kinley from that tape? And then another one said of, of a different person, they sounded like Dr. Kinley. Well, a lot of, a lot of them, a lot of people did. And um, they tried to emulate him. And um, the, the, the thing of it is, is, is if they did it in righteousness, if they just wanted to preach what he preached, you know, and tried to do it the way he did it, you know, try to be faithful to it, that's, that's a good thing. But you see, um, there are people that will, will take the truth in, un, in unrighteousness. And that's what he's talking about here, okay? Now you couldn't, you, you know, he just went through and you just couldn't refute the stuff that he was saying, because he was talking about, oh, I don't want to get into that. I want to, I want to stay on the on topic. Okay. Um, so uh, continuing in the transcript. And then I want to say something else right here too. Now it's stupid in you putting up money to send a peace, another peace mission overseas to preach an erroneous doctrine over there. Now that's stupid. I wouldn't be asking you to do nothing like that. If we couldn't prove the divine authenticity, the unerring accuracy, the absolute infallibility of Yahweh and his eternal purpose, I wouldn't ask you to do that. Now, I don't have to try to defend anything at all. I don't have to do that. I preached it to you. I lived it. I performed the miracles that Yahweh gave me to perform among you, and you know it. None of it has ever failed. But it is expedient for you to realize and to recognize that that satanic spirit will rise up among you, brethren. Let me repeat that. Now, Chuck, Chuck told everybody to get into the mystery of iniquity, so that's what I'm doing, okay? I'm just kidding. Chuck didn't say that. But uh, none, none of it has ever failed. But it is expedient for you to realize and to recognize that the satanic spirit will rise up among you, brethren. I'm talking about among yourselves. It's just expedient. You can't, you, you can't, you can expect that. It's supposed to do that. I, I am not kicking about that. See, he says he's not even kicking about it, knowing that the mystery of iniquity would, would try to corrupt his teaching. That's his job. That's what he, that's what he was made to do. Dr. Kenley also referred to Satan as his man, okay? 
that he is sent here to do a job and and he's doing and and, and I don't mean I'm I'm not swearing he's doing a damn good job okay it's expedient that you you can expect that it's supposed to do that I'm not kicking about that I just want you to be prepared to reject it cuz I want you to be safe okay now I think it's in this transcript also he goes on and he talks about how that there would be those that are raised up among you and that they would be teaching lies. Okay. Now, what Tara was talking about as far as, as long as you stick to the principles of the teaching, okay, as long as you stick to the law, if, as long as someone can prove something to the law and to the testimony. Now, if somebody says something to me that's not in the book, okay, I, will, I, I have the right to say, I, I, I don't accept that, okay? I want proof, okay? And there, 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 had, there have been many people that have broken off from this teaching. And it all begins kind of in the same way, if I can put it that way. That, that, and and let, let's go back to, uh, as, as Bob White would say, Sister E, let's go back to uh, 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 Exodus, the third chapter, okay? Nah. Genesis. Yeah, get get what I'm thinking, not what I'm saying. Okay, all right, and just just pick pick it up at at, at three. And I want someone to get a dictionary, and I, I'd like a real dictionary instead of an online dictionary. Do we have one here, Pam? I used to. Okay, but uh, okay. Well, if if you have a have a like a regular Webster's dictionary. Um, Chuck, maybe you have one, okay, in your house. But I'd I'd like I'd like to, you to get the word subtle for me out of that. Now, uh, okay. start at start at chapter three, uh, verse one, please. Start with SUV. Genesis three and one. Genesis three and one. Uh -huh. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh had made. Now, if you're going to start making a description, like we, you know, like we make a description of of, of Yahshua, you know, and you, you you that he is, you see, the manifestation of those nine divine attributes. That's a description of Yahshua the Messiah. You see, besides other things that go along with it, as faithful and and and, and grace and all these other things. If you get a description of Yahshua the Messiah, you see you'll come up with those terms. Now, if you were to make a description of the mystery of iniquity, one of the first things that you would come up with is subtle, okay? Now he, now the serpent, or see, he's talking about the mystery of iniquity. Just like a, a, a serpent, um, you know, if, if, you know, I mean, how often do you hear a snake walk up to you, okay? Never. From a natural standpoint, they don't make a sound. Okay, they just do their, their little S, you see, they, they just come on up to you and, and they blend into their environment. Okay, I've, I've seen, um, uh, up, you know, when I was a kid, we used to catch grass snakes. But you have to be careful because they do bite and, and they'll, they'll, they'll draw blood. Okay, and, but, but you'd, see, you'd, you'd see it move and then, then as soon as it stopped, it would almost disappear. It was subtle, okay? So the serpent is more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh had made. Now look at, he's Yahweh saying this, and then he's gonna demonstrate it. Okay, now, now, now keep going, please. And he said unto the woman, yea, have Yahweh said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Yahweh have said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Okay, so, so we, we got it understood there. She understands the commandment, okay? Now, do you read anything about Satan in chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 2? Well, do you read anything about him in chapter one? No, you don't hear nothing about him until, like Tara was bringing out, that commandment was, was given because he didn't have anything to do. See, 
in in um in second thessalonians the second chapter we'll get to that uh, uh in a little bit hopefully um it says that his job is to oppose yahweh he opposes himself with all that is called elohim okay so if yahweh gives a commandment satan's job and what he was made for and dr kinley says he ain't kicking about it is to oppose that okay so so he see see he knows the commandment okay and then he says to the woman you shall not surely die now true he added that word not to it but you see he 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 adds a little bit more uh, uh let's see uh see a little more sauce okay to it okay if you see see it, it, it it's it's more than that keep reading there please let me pick it up um and he said unto the woman Yea, have Yahweh said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Yahweh have said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For now, there's, Elohim... a, there's a colon there after die. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. he gives an explanation. Okay, go ahead. For Elohim doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, doesn't that sound great? You see? See, not only um, will you not die, you see, Elohim did this, you see, so that uh, you wouldn't become a god. Because if you ate of this fruit, you shall be as a god. Okay, see, that, I mean, it's interesting that he uses those words. Now, uh, uh, um, so what does she do? Okay, go ahead, please read six. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the yeah. eyes of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So, so anyways, they, they hide themselves because they're ashamed because they were disobedient. And it, see, they went from a state of innocence to, to a, a carnal mind, and that that occurred mm -hmm. through that mystery of iniquity. Now, you see, let me just throw this out to you. Okay, and um, uh, I can offer some proof, you see, uh, at another time. I've talked about this before. But, you see, if that hadn't occurred, you see, Yahweh's purpose would have just stalled right there. It wouldn't have moved forward. Because until they knew, or, you see, uh, or, or were naked, knew that they were naked, they were in an innocent state. They weren't going to reproduce, you see. It, it took that mystery of iniquity to to fool them then the, uh, you see and then to 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 lose that innocence so that they could then bring forth offspring and really if you go to that chart okay the elementary chart and you look at that adam thing in the scriptures there you see the adam when he died he died you see, Yahweh said, in the day that you eat thereof, you shall die. Now, Adam lived over 900 years. But you see, one day with Yahweh is as a thousand years. So he did die. Okay, now he died psychologically, but he also went down into the grave. And you, if you notice on the court roundabout in the, of that plate, you see of the, the Adam plate, there's a tombstone there. Okay. And the scripture that's quoted there is, is, is where Adam died at 900 and whatever years that it was. Okay. So in that day, he did die. Okay. So you have that coming down, you see, uh, of, of that death, you see. Now, that death passed unto all mankind. And that Yahshua came in and he made an atonement. And you read that in Daniel, the ninth chapter. That he that 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 490 years uh, that 490 year cycle from the coming forth of the commandment to build the temple, you see, it would be 490 years, and it said that 
Yahshua would bring an end to sin. Now he brought an end to that sin that passed on to all mankind from Adam. But you see, uh, I'm getting off the train of thought here. So you have this serpent. Now see, he is subtle. He is, he is, see, you see, he is so subtle. And, and, and look at, this, this is why you have to be careful. You have to listen to what everybody says, and you have to make sure they provide witnesses. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that if someone preaches something that's inaccurate, that they're a satanic spirit. But there, you see, that mystery of iniquity, he is working on every one of us. P people, we, you see, we all walk in the door with an ego. You see, and what did, what did Satan appear, uh, uh, appeal to with Eve, but to her ego, that she could be likened to a God, okay? Now, I've heard so many things over the years taught, okay, um, by people in class, okay, and, and, and that were wrong. And I have thought many things myself and was corrected and took the correction. I have no, you see... I, nobody loves being corrected, but it's sure better, you see, it's better to take, take it now, you see. Take your lickings now, you see, as opposed to, to taking them later when it's too late, okay? You see, we're, we're all, we're, we all get roughed up from time to time, okay? That's just going to happen, okay? Now, Tara hit right on it when she said people preaching without witnesses. Okay, now I'm going way back. I remember in another class that I used to go to years and years ago, okay, um, that someone in the class said that they had a revelation about love, okay, and that this person said that, uh, you know, that, that, that and, and, and this person really seemed to change, okay, when that their personality changed and everything, that they had this revelation. And they came over to uh, uh, my house one, one day. And so what I did is I, I said, well, if you've had this revelation about love, what is it? And the person said to me, okay, now this person uh, uh, is no longer in class, by the way. And I think, I think the person passed away too. But um, the, what, what the person told me was, well, I can't really explain it. Yahweh has to reveal it to you. Now, now I was a little feistier back then than I am now. Okay. <laughs> yes. And when that person said that to me, I said, well, if you can't prove it to me, if you can't show me your revelation in the book, then, then I think it's a lie. Okay. See, I, 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 I was about as subtle as a brick, you see, at that <laughs> <laughs> at that time, okay? Um, maybe I haven't changed that much. But you see, if someone can't prove it out, okay? Now I've seen people make statements. See, I've heard, I've heard one uh, inaccurate doctrine come along after another, after another, after another. And I've seen where groups got, the, the groups of people got so caught up in it, they split off from the school. Okay, and I, the, the, I, I, there, there are many, you see, uh, times where that sort of thing has happened, and people were deceived. You see, what Dr. Kinley said in this transcript has come to pass on many, many, many occasions. So you have to be diligent. Examine what I say. You see, now, I would never you see, consciously teach something if I didn't think it was right, okay? And um, th this is something that uh, actually, when I first came into class and I heard about, you know, this kind of stuff, I had a fear for a while to even teach something until, you see, I knew absolutely, you see, that, that I could prove it down to the law and the prophets. You see, and, and all the way through, you see. Now, Satan is subtle. He is subtle. And you see, 
wouldn't you like a revelation about love and how it changed this person? And people were caught up in this stuff. And, 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 and it was an emotional thing, okay? You see, and, and I've seen people uh, with something that they couldn't prove run you all over the book saying, okay, I'm going to prove this to you. Run you all over the book. And if you're not careful, and if you don't discern, you see, you'll find that they didn't prove it to you. Sure. Okay, I've had people, uh, multiple trains of thought, you see. And, and you see, you, 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 you don't want, look at, you come this far, okay? I've, I don't know how many times I've heard people say stuff like, well, you, you don't need blood, water, spirit anymore. You don't need death, burial, resurrection anymore, okay? Dr. Kinley says in this same tra transcript here, he says, you can't get, I think it's the same transcript, either that or it was the last lecture. It's maybe his last lecture, okay? He says, you can't get up off of blood, water, spirit, okay? He, he said, you can't get up off of it, you see? And, and, and look at, I don't know about you, but every time I turn on the news and see a blood, water, spirit 40, I'm blasted by it. I'm excited about it. I, you see, I feel, you see, uh, uh, a sense of exhilaration because you know what it says to me? It says to me, Yahweh is real. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what it says to me. Now, if someone says, well, I don't need, I've heard it a million times. I don't need to hear it anymore. Well, you know, they, they should, they should re-examine that. Okay, that's just not the way that it is. Dr. Kinley never got sick of teaching blood, water, spirit, 40, or death, burial, resurrection. And, and I believe it was his last lecture, he brought it up, okay? Because people back then wanted to get up off of blood, water, spirit, 40. You see, these are the things that convince you. These are the things that keep you strong. These are the things that keep you focused, okay? Now, let's, let's go over to, um, um, uh, Okay. Now, oh, That's did someone get something for me in the dictionary, please? I got it. I got it. Okay. I had that too. Go ahead, Chuck, and I'll add. I'll add more. Okay. You want me to start, J Joel? Yeah, please. Subtle. The etymology. Boy, these are some good ones in here. Let me tell you. <laughs> it is a good. A good I have some good ones too. <laughs> okay. The etymology is fine, thin, precise. Originally, closely woven. Closely woven, you see? Now, if something is closely woven, doesn't that sound like a net? Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. His lies are closely woven. They're well thought out, that mystery of iniquity. Okay? Okay, go ahead, Chuck. It says to weave. To weave, okay? See, like a spider in a web. Okay, go ahead. First definition, thin, rare, tedious, tedious, not dense or heavy, capable of making or noticing fine distinctions in meeting, in meanings. You see, fine distinctions, okay? You see that, that, see, like with the not, and you shall not surely die. But you see, Satan is very good at that. He can, you see, and I'm, and I'm not calling anybody Satan. I'm talking about how the mystery of iniquity can work with a person. Now, I have a witness that I want to get to in the physical creation, too. But go ahead, please. Marked by or requiring mental keenness. Now, that mystery of iniquity, he is mentally keen. Okay? Now, Yahweh, and, and it says uh, in, the in one of the transcripts, it says Yahweh made Yahweh Elohim. Now, we know he's the only begotten son, but he said that he made Yahweh Elohim. And then Yahweh Elohim made the rest of the creation. You know, the, the, if, if, when you go back into the angelic, you see now the angelic, Satan was an angel. That's, the, that's where he came from. Who he is and where, you know, the who, what, when, where, and why. Where he is from is from that angelic. Now, now the stupidest angel is more brilliant than Einstein. Okay, now granted, when that, that, those angels, when Satan and a third of that host were cast down into the earth, they became de demonic spirits or demonic spirits, and that they were di divested somewhat of their powers. Still, Satan, you see, Satan was so magnificent 
that even all the angels, you see, were conned by him. See, this thing that Dr. Kinley said in the transcript, that went on in the angelic. Same darn thing. Satan was just raised right up among one of the brethren, you see, and that he had them fooled. He, he had them all fooled, folks. He had them all conned. Doesn't it say that he deceiveth the whole world? Isn't that, I think Tara read that in Revelation. He deceiveth the whole world. Now, if he deceives this whole world, he deceived that whole world until Yahshua revealed himself, you see, or Yahweh Elohim, and was salvation to that angelic. Now, even then, a third were so convinced that they were, that they did not repent and were cast down into the earth plane. You see, but they all got fooled, you see. And, and, and that's how good that mystery of iniquity is. He is so intelligent, so keen. You see, that's where, where Tara was reading with the, with the mystery of iniquity and the Prince of Tyre. I wrote down, you see, the attributes that are displayed there. That he has wisdom greater than, what, than, than Daniel. He has knowledge. It said, no secret can they hide from me. He is rich, okay, not only physically, but you see, as far as other intellectual gifts and other things, okay? It says, by thy traffic thou hast got riches. He's beautiful. Every precious stone was his covering. He's powerful. You see, that Prince of Tyre was the ruler of the Mediterranean Sea. The Egyptians and the Babylonians both tried to conquer Tyre and couldn't do it. Okay, that's how powerful it was. And that he was vain. In Isaiah, the 14th chapter, he says, I will be like the Most High. He wants to be like Yahweh. You see? That's, that's what he wants, you see? And it says, he was perfect in thy ways until iniquity was found in thee. See, he was perfect. He was a perfect deceiver. He's a perfect devil, you see? And, and Yahweh made him that way. Keep going, Chuck. Okay, I want to read that last one again because there's one word that, that I didn't get to. Okay, I only have that. three minutes. So. Marked by or requiring mental keenness, reasoning. Mental Del keenness, reasoning, go ahead delicately skillful or clever he is delicately skillful and clever with his lies go ahead or ingenious he's ingenious now now look at if every single one of us at some point in time and i'm not just talking about before you were in class i'm talking about since you came into class he is going to fool you on something you see he mm -hmm. that that's his job now I mean, just, just look at this idea here, okay? Yahweh gives a commandment. What's his job? Make them, now we don't have time to read any more of that definition. One of the definitions that I really love is an insidious poison. An insidious poison is a poison that you don't even realize that you've been poisoned by it, okay? That's what an insidious poison. But you read through that definition because I only have two more minutes and I just want to want to make a, a, couple, a couple quick points, okay? And, and we could get into this some more. Because there's, there's, there's a lot in the mystery of iniquity. But you see, once Yahweh says something, the mystery of iniquity is going to try to get rid of it. That's what he did with Eve. So when Peter says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. What's Satan's job? is to get rid of that name of Yahshua or to diminish that name at least mm -hmm. or replace it with something else. You see, before, before, when I first came into class, the only place I had ever seen the name Yahshua was in a holy name Bible. I couldn't find it in dictionaries. I couldn't find it in encyclopedias. It was hidden. You had to go to Yeshua, Isus, Isos, you had to go back to all kinds. Now it's, now it's available. The information is available. He, he not only got rid of that name of Yahshua, he buried it. Okay? <laughs> now he's not over with that. He wants to get rid of that name of Yahshua because that's the only name, you see, that you can be saved in. You see, that's just another example of how he works. Now, in, in the human body, the, what I'm studying now, am I out of time? I'm out of time. I have a beautiful example in the human body of how this works, and it's cancer, and how that the cancer is subtle, and how that the cancer, okay, let me just 
read this one thing. Okay, it's one thing about this is this is out of a scientific manuscript. I've never heard words like this. Okay, um, okay, it's out of this is out of the New, New, New England Journal of Medicine. See, cancer recruits healthy cells. Healthy cells are recruited and corrupted by the malignant cells, okay, you look up the word malignant sometime, to aid the growth and spread of the cancer, that the cancer is a corrupting influence. You see, this is your body. People in class, we, and we form that body of Yahshua the Messiah. And the mystery of iniquity is trying to corrupt you. He's trying to recruit you, okay? He is that malignant growth. Okay, now in another article, it says that, that some of these normal cells, healthy cells that are actually made to protect the body are corrupted to serve a new master. I have never seen anything like that in my life in a scientific manuscript, but you can sure see the principle. So uh, sorry, sorry to, to take a minute over. Uh, I really enjoyed class, and maybe we can get into the cancer stuff some more and some more stuff on the mystery of iniquity in the future. Um, I'll turn it over to the moderator. Hallelujah. That concludes our lecture for this evening. Um, if you have any questions, please hang on after the doxology, and you can talk to the speakers then. May we all rise for the doxology. We have classes on Zoom on Sunday from 11 to 1 and on Wednesday from 7 to 9. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, long glory and majesty, dominion and power, Hope for all times now and ever, let us all say hallelujah. hallelujah.